Welcome to this series of video lectures titled Public Health History, Eras in Public Health, created to support Public Health A200, Introduction to Public Health. To understand public health today, we need to look at where it came from. We need to go back in time and look at the different discoveries and interventions that helped keep communities healthy. We are going to look at six different eras in public health, starting back with antiquities, through the hygiene movement, contagion control, up to the more modern times where we're looking at filling in holes in the medical care system, health promotion, disease prevention, and then finally today, population health. So let's start back with the health protection movement. This goes back to antiquities, say as far back as 3000 BC. The focus was on authority-based control of individual and community behaviors. There were things that were frowned upon and even illegal that were not put in place for health purposes but served to keep the population healthy. So we had religious and cultural practices and prohibited behaviors. So if you think about this time in history, very early people thought illness was brought on by supernatural beings and gods. So if you were bad, you were punished. Priests and medicine men treated illness through religious ceremonies where evil spirits were thought to be driven out of the body. The ancient Egyptians rose to the forefront of medicine around 3000 BC. Although their practices were based in magic and religion, the Egyptians designed structured procedures and kept accurate health records. Phys physicians were put to death if their patients died. Could you imagine that today? In the late 400 BCs, Hippocrates began his study of medicine in Greece. He made one of the greatest contributions to medical history by stressing the importance of, of observation and note-taking. Hippocrates taught that disease was a natural cause, not supernatural punishment. The only way to cure disease is to observe the sick. So he also encouraged cleanliness and proper diet to prevent illness. Hippocrates is known as the father of medicine. To this day, physicians are required to abide by the Hippocratic Oath, which is a code of behavior written by Hippocrates thousands of years ago. Aristotle was another Greek contributor to the growing medical field. Aristotle developed the field of anatomy by dissecting animals. He was the first to make a connection between medicine biology, and the body. In the mid-100s AD, a Greek physician named Claudius Galen went to Rome and quickly became famous for curing the emperor's stomach ache. Galen reintroduced the idea of Hippocrates to the Romans. However, he ignored the practice of careful observation and note-taking. Instead, he taught that the body was composed of four fluids. If the fluids became unbalanced, sickness would occur. Galen also developed theories of human anatomy by dissecting pigs. Many of Galen's theories were flawed, and the true medical progress was held back for centuries. And then we entered the Dark Ages where there were many plagues and the spread of disease because of bad hygiene. So, the results of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance was important medical advances were made during these times. However, the cause of disease was still a mystery. Many people developed infections and died at young ages. The typical lifespan was only about 40 years. Despite the lack of understanding, the general attitude resulting from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance was one of intellect and reason. Reason was replaced reason replaced religion and superstition in the medical field. 
So if you look at some of the notable events during the health protection era, we have isolation and quarantine. Now we hear the word quarantine quite a lot, but there are actually distinctions between who is put in isolation and who is put in quarantine. So this is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. This is a governmental organization that you should become very familiar with. But you can see here that isolation is when you separate sick people with a contagious disease with people who are not sick. Quarantine separates and restricts the movement of people who are exposed to a contagious disease to see if they become sick. So if you have the flu and you are put somewhere where you don't come in contact with other people, that would be considered isolation. Quarantine would be if I have the flu and I exposed all of you to the flu and then we isolated you all so that you don't spread it to others. So within this era, we also had sexual prohibitions that reduced re disease transmission. So monogamy was a practice based in religion. And then we also had dietary restrictions that reduced disease. If you look at this list, you can see different religions basically have different practices or restriction and the rationale. So you could see here that, um, for example, moderation in all foods for Buddhists and they do some fasting, um, they refrain from meat, vegetarian diet is desirable. You can see that most of these things are beneficial for health, but the reason that they did them is not necessarily for health, it was for religious purposes. So many of them have alcohol is prohibited, um, pork or shellfish like in Judaism. That was not because of the unhealthiness, it's just that they, they, those are foods that can become contaminated, although that is not why they did not eat them. It was because land animals that do not have cloven hooves and that do not chew their cud are forbidden as unclean. So they didn't eat these foods because of religious beliefs, although they had health benefits.